asana or tree pose at the moment. It's a very common pose and it's a commonly badly done pose. So the most common thing I see is that people aren't getting themselves centered to start off with. So the feet are right underneath the hips and we're going to lift up the toes and spread them out as wide as we can. And then pick one heel up at a time and take them back because trees have roots, right? Then we're going to bring the hands into prayer position in front of the heart. And without throwing the hip over to the side, we're going to take the weight over into this left hip. Now we're going to pick the heel of the right foot up and turn the knee out to the side because we need to get the rotation of the thigh bone that is the most important thing here. We're not just taking the knee back but the whole thigh bone needs to rotate and then when we're settled we're going to pick the foot up and place it on the leg to wherever it naturally gets to. It's fine to have it on the calf. You can leave your foot on the floor with your uh, heel resting on your ankle if that's where you're up to or if you can get up into your groin Yep, Philip is nice and flexible, so she can do that. The most important thing here is not to allow the weight to come out over the hip. And there is a little bit of that there. We need to bring the hip a little bit further over the leg. <laughs> See, and this is what happens. People have learned to do this pose by bracing against that leg. So we want to keep the hip. There we go. Try again. Yep, so you have learned how to do it like that. So we need to keep the hip and the knee in alignment before we bring the foot up. So try and bring the foot up now. Okay. Come. Yeah, I know, because you've learned how to do it like that, see? <laughs> this is a problem. This is a big problem. You're actually pushing your hip right out of alignment, and it is going to hurt you in the long run, okay? As your body gets older, you're going to damage that hip joint by doing that, by putting all of that weight into an unaligned hip. Mm. Yeah, so you do have to learn how to keep that hip in, okay? So take it up to wherever you can. Try not to go so high. Maybe I'm going to take it to the calf. That's much better. And then we need to rotate that thigh bone around. Okay, the next thing that goes wrong here, and I can see it happening, is this hip comes up. We need to get this hip to come down. So the hip comes down. Think that you've got a big bowl of water in your pelvis and you don't want to spill any of that water. There's still a bit of hip action coming here. All right, then draw the belly button back towards the... There we go. And then when you're set and steady and have found your dristi, which is your point of seeing without seeing. Some people are better looking at the floor, some people are better looking up. Whatever works for you. Then you can raise your arms. Relax the shoulders down away from the ears and not thrusting the chest forward. We want the waist nice and quiet. The waist comes back. That's pretty good. Okay, and as we come down, we bring the hands and the foot down at the same time. Re-establish our mountain pose. And then go to the other side when we're ready by taking the weight over into the hip without thrusting the hip out. Pick the heel up and turn the knee out, getting that. And this is where we can practice keeping that hip down as we raise the leg. And then draw the belly button back in and raise the arms when you're ready. That's good. There's still a little bit of that hip coming up. You need to bring this hip. That's much better. And then the knee rotates out. Drawing. It's like that old-fashioned furniture that had those um, wooden plugs in the joints. We want to be drawing that hip in, really sucking it in, so the hip and the knee stay in good alignment. That's it. Quite in the waist, but drawing the belly button in, so the hip goes down, the buttock scoops forward. Good work. And then bring the hand and the foot down at the same time, the crust now. 